na mtazamaji kumradhi mashini kidogo hapo ile anima ile mitambo imeleta kasheshe kuhusiana na vidokezo hivyo ambavyo tulikuwa tunaangazia zaidi baadhi ya taarifa ambazo tumezipa kipaumbele kwenye taarifa zetu za mbiu ya Kenya na KTN hata hivyo wacha niendelee kukuarifu na yale ambayo tumeweza kuyapokea hivi sasa katika meza yetu ya habari Wizara ya elimu imetoa ratiba mpya ya mitihani ya kitaifa na pia siku za shule za kitaifa zitakapofungwa kutokana na mabadiliko ya siku ya marejeo ya marejeleo ya kura ya urais tarehe 26 mwezi ujao wa Oktoba mwaka huu kulingana na taarifa kwa wakuu wa elimu sehemu za mashinani wanafunzi wa kidato cha kwanza hadi cha tatu katika shule za upili watafunga shule tarehe 24 mwezi wa Oktoba huku wanafunzi wa darasa la kwanza hadi la saba kifunga shule tarehe 25 mwezi huo huo wa Oktoba pia maandalizi ya watahiniwa wa kidato cha nne na wale wa darasa la nane yanatarajiwa kuanza tarehe 30 mwezi wa Oktoba huku mitihani ya darasa la nane kiandaliwa kuanzia tarehe 31 hadi tarehe mbili mwezi wa Novemba kulingana na taarifa hiyo ambayo iliyotiwa sahihi na Robert Masese kwa niaba ya katibu katika Wizara ya Elimu ratiba ya kukalia mitihani hiyo itakapo itakayoanza inatarajiwa kusalia vile vile ilivyo hivi sasa Tuendelee na taarifa zaidi mtazamaji kando na taarifa hiyo ambayo ndio tumeipokea kutoka katika kwenye meza yetu ya habari mapema ala asiri hii abiria kwenye barabara ya Landis na ile ya Pumwani hapa jijini Nairobi ambayo inayopakana na kituo cha Country Bus walilazimika kutembea hadi katikati mwa jiji la Nairobi baada ya wafanyi biashara wa soko la Gikomba kuchoma magurudumu wakilalamikia barabara mbovu ya kuelekea sokoni humo wanavyosema inawaachia wakikadiria hasara kubwa kila kukicha kulingana na wafanyi biashara hao mwana kandarasi ambaye aliyepewa kazi ameanza kutengeneza barabara hiyo kabla ya uchaguzi wa tarehe nane mwezi wa Agosti hajaonekana kwa muda licha ya hakikisho lililotolewa na aliyekuwa gavana Evans Kidero kwamba barabara hiyo ingekamilika kabla ya uchaguzi. Sasa wanamtaka gavana Mike Sonko kuingilia kati na kuitengeneza barabara hiyo huku akiapa kuendelea na maandamano hayo iwapo shughuli ya kuitengeneza haitaanza mara moja. Hapa ni ukitaka kuingia Gikomba barabara ni moja peke yake eh ambayo inatumika na mabasi zote za kutoka country bus zile zote zinabeba ukambani zile ziko kwa long new pumwani road zile ziko kwa kombo munyiri eh, na zile za Gikomba ndani zote ni zinatumia barabara moja kwa hivyo kuna kuwa na msongamano mkubwa sana unapata gari imetoka country bus eh? kutoka tu hapa area hii ya Gikomba inatumia kama masaa mawili ama matatu so sisi wote tumeudhika manake kila mtu anahangaika Eh? Ndio maana eh? Tumeamua kufunga manake tuliona tukifunga huko it haitakuwa it will not be felt. Manake wale 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 wakubwa wale wamekaa chini eh? hawajui kama huko tuna shida. So tukaamua tufunge huku so that waisikie pia. Sasa baada vile tumekuja nimeshikusha pole mbali. Sasa nitembe nifike town nifika kazi nimechelewa. Na watoto pia wakitoka shule hao wale wanawajui Nairobi labda mtaenda kuchukulia town itakuwaaje. Sasa kama ni governor ndio wanataka atokezee aongee na wale wako hapa aone vile atashirisha mane, maneno. Kwa sababu mimi nilichaguliwa na niliahidi wananchi wa starehe nitakuwa link yao kati ya national government na county government. Wamedipigia na malalamishi mingi sana na tumeongea na county government Nairobi Water kwa sababu ndio wanatengeneza hapa. Na wamiambia contractor arudi kwa site saa hii kwa sababu ukiangalia leni ni moja na watu watu wana, wana, inabidi wazunguke all the way kutoka huko ikomba ya chini wakienda town. Kwa hivyo tumeongea na contractor governor ame sema anza kazi saa hii na barabara ianze kutengenezwa Mtazamaji watu saba walioshtakiwa kwa mauaji ya maafisa 42 wa polisi eneo la Baragoi kaunti ya Samburu wameachiliwa huru na mahakama kuu mjini Nakuru sababu hao miongoni mwao mwanasiasa mmoja machifu wawili Manaibu wawili wa chifu na askari wawili wa akiba waliachiliwa huru baada ya mahakama hiyo kukosa ushahidi uliowahusisha na mauaji hayo. Saba hao walitiwa nguvuni punde tu baada ya mauaji hayo katika eneo la bonde la Suguta baada ya msako kufanywa na maafisa wa usalama. Wakati wa tukio hilo vijana wa jamii ya Kiturkana wanadaiwa kuvamia makazi na kuiba zaidi ya ngombe tano. Uh, I've been asked to apply for the relief from 
Were these items produced in court? They were not. Operation ya kuwaondoa majeruhi kwenye vifusi vya jengo lililoporomoka hapo jana mjini Kapsabet, kaunti ya Nandi imekamilika na hakuna aliyefariki. Takriban watu 41 walijeruhiwa, mmoja kati yao akihudumiwa katika hospitali ya Kapsabet, huku watatu wakiendelea kupata matibabu katika hospitali ya rufaa ya Moi iliyoko mjini Eldoret. Wadau wanaohusika akiwemo walioko walioko serikalini wametoa maoni yao kuhusu swala hilo la ujenzi na majumba bila kuzingatia kanuni ya wale wanne watakuwa wamekuwa discharge leo asubuhi kumaanisha kwamba tuko na mmoja pekee yake ambaye bado yuko hapa. Mimi nimetoa eh, 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 tahadhari kutoka kwa eh, ofisi yangu ya county kwamba every staff ambaye kazi yake ni kufanya approval ya architectural designs na wale ambao wanafaa kufanya ile inaitwa supervision na every developer ama investor ambaye anajenga hapa county lazima wafuatilie sheria iwapo tutagundua ya kwamba staff wetu hawajafanya kazi yake yeye ya tayari tutampiga e, tutamvuta kazi tukihakikisha kwamba tukipata e, information kwamba kuna developer ambaye afuatilii sheria ya ujenzi sisi pia tukisaidiana na tukisaidiana na national construction authority tutahakikisha ya kwamba kazi hiyo haitaendelea so kwa hivyo nimetoa tahadhari na mimi nangojea ripoti kamili iweze kunifikia mimi kama governor next week on monday ili niweze kutoa uamuzi ya direction ambayo nita take na so far kufikia sasa e, tumeweza kujua kwamba ma, majeruhi walikuwa moja watatu wameparekwa Eldoret kule hospitalini walikuwa referred e, na wawili wako katika hospitali ya Rufaa ya Kapsabet wengine walitibiwa na kudischargeiwa hivi sasa wakati janga kama ile linapatikana after mat we normally wa tuna tunafanya investigation investigation is ongoing hatuna la kusema zaidi we need to fully confirm before we say anything lakini jana vile tukio ilitokea tulikuwa pale juu ambapo tulisikia nduru hapa na pale tukakimbia kuona ni nini pale imetendeka kweli kufika hapa hivi tukapata jengo imangukia watu tukaanza kubeba zile chuma tuzitoe na pale vile tulikuwa tunaelekea kutoa hiyo tunajaribu kutoa hiyo chuma tukapata mmoja akilia anasema ni mguu ndio tulimtoa tukamweka kwa ambulance akachukuliwa lakini wakati rescue team na red cross ilifika tukaanza sasa shughuli ya kuwatafuta kuwa tunakuwa nataka tutibitishe kama kuna mwingine ndani au kuna mwingine amaangukiwa na hii lakini vile hizo ma, magari za county zilikuja zikaanza kutoa changa au hizi makokoto na machuma kweli hatukupata yoyote tukapata tu mango zao na vitu kama nini bags jacket na torch bila shaka ni afueni kwa taifa zima baada ya janga hilo ama maporomoko hayo hakuna mtu yoyote aliyefariki tukiendelea na taarifa zaidi mtazamaji habari kutoka tume ya uchaguzi na mipaka nchini IEBC zinaarifu kwamba Praxedes Torore ambaye amekuwa mkurugenzi wa masuala ya sheria katika tume hiyo ameamua kustafu. Torore amechukua hatua hiyo wakati joto linaendelea kupanda ndani ya tume hiyo baada ya mahakama ya juu kutoa uamuzi kwamba IEBC iliboronga uchaguzi wa urais Agosti tarehe nane mwaka huu. IEBC inapanga marudio ya uchaguzi huo kufanyiwa tarehe 26 mwezi ujao wa Oktoba. Wadadisi wanasubiri kuona iwapo maafisa zaidi katika tume hiyo ambao huenda wakaamua kusalimu amri na kujiondoa kutokana na kile kinachoonekana kuwa hadhi ya tume hiyo imetiwa dosari. Waziri wa Fedha Henry Rotich amesema kwamba serikali imeweka mikakati kabambe ili kuhakikisha kuwa marejeo ya uchaguzi yanafanyika bila doa wala taksiri yoyote. Akizungumza mjini Eldoret County ya Wasin Gishu, Rotich amesema kuwa tayari baraza la mawaziri limeidhinisha rasmi fedha zitakazotumika na tume ya IEBC kwa maandalizi ya marejeo ya uchaguzi huo. Walipitisha ile inaitwa supplementary budget na pesa ya IBC uh, bilioni kumi iko kwa hiyo supplementary hiyo itawekwa itaparekwa kwa uh, bunge uh, Tuesday uh, ili ipitishwe ndio sasa tupeane pesa tu IBC waanze kujipanga uh, ili mambo ya 
repeat election ifanywe October 26. Mwana sheria mkuu nchini Gidhu Mwigai amesema kuwa haya kuwepo ama hakutakuwepo na hali ya sitofahamu ya kikatiba iwapo uchaguzi hautofanyika wakati wa siku stini kama ilivyoagizwa na mahakama. Daktari Mwigai ama Profesa Mwigai Kumradhi amesisitiza kuwa Rais Uhuru Kinyata atasalia uongozini hadi Rais mpya atakapochaguliwa. Mwana sheria mkuu alikuwa akizungumza na wanahabari na kujibu maswali ya iwapo kutakuwepo na tatizo lolote by the, uh, the issues relating to the conclusion of the electoral period. This electoral period started on the day the election was declared and will end on the day a swearing-in is held. Finally, for the avoidance of doubt, I would like to draw your attention to the provisions of Article 3 of the Constitution. For for those, perhaps, who have not addressed their minds to this issue, some of them being very otherwise seemingly distinguished uh, uh, practitioners of the law, this is what Article 3 of the Constitution provides. Every person has an obligation to respect, uphold, and defend this Constitution. But Article 2, 3, 2 is even more important. Any attempt to establish a government otherwise than in compliance with this constitution is unlawful. Any attempt to establish any form of government other than in compliance with this constitution is declared by the constitution unlawful. I want to finalize, therefore, by saying there is no government known to the Constitution of Kenya called a transitional government or a caretaker government or any other form of government other than that that is defined in this Constitution. And I would like the Kenyan public to know, therefore, that until a fresh government is sworn in, which includes the president, the deputy, and their cabinet, the government now in office legitimately remains in office by full force of the Constitution uh, of, of the Republic of Kenya. That is all I wish to clarify. I will take two questions. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Benjou. Uh, I'm going to request that you the camera because I'm sitting here. Why? And I'm going to request that you, uh, you remain faithful to the subject of yes. this clarification. De definitely, I will. Um, <coughs> Na mtazamaji huyo ni mwana sheria mkuu Profesa Gidhu Mwigai ambaye amesema kwamba hakutakuwepo na hali ya sitofahamu ya kikatiba iwapo uchaguzi hautofanyika katika zile siku stini ambazo zimewekwa na mahakama ya juu ama kulingana pia na katiba vile ambavyo inavyoeleza muda mfupi uliopita mtazamaji wakati tulikuwa tumekupeleka katika makao makuu ya okoa Kenya pale ya NASA vile vile NASA iliweza kushtumu kauli hiyo wakipuuzilia mbali kauli iliyotolewa na profesa Gidhu Mwigai mapema hii leo kusiana na jinsi hali ilivyo hivi sasa hebu tuweze kurejelea pia kauli ya NASA kusiana na kauli iliyotolewa na mwanasheria mkuu Uhuru Kenyatta that is agent at the Bombers of Kenya National Telling Center logged into the IBC servers using a personal email account dk dkchirchir@gmail.com contrary to the IBC's own ICT user policy, as it threatens and insults the judges. Has Uhuru Kenyatta ever cared to ask Davis Churchill, his agent at the Bombers, why he logged into the IBC, IBC servers? Does it bother Uhuru Kenyatta that the accounts of one WC, W. Chabukati at ibc.org.ke, which was supposed to have read-only privileges on the system, was used to delete files from 34A and B from the IB server to give him the so-called victory, and that was used nearly 10,000 times. Does it bother Huru Kenyatta 
that Mr. Chris Musando had to be killed for the so-called victory to be delivered, and that his government declined offer of help in the so-called investigations into assassination. In all his ranting, rage and fury, and fury, who was never addressed the question of illegalities and regularities that the courts found the IBC to have committed. That silence can only mean that the regularities and the, and the legalities were designed and committed to benefit him, and they did. Uhuru has never seen the need to speak on the, on the need for free, fair, and credible elections. He wants Kenyans to proceed to another fraudulent election as long as it is designed to give him victory. Uhuru Kenyatta wants the ballot boxes to be opened as argued by, the, by judges he briefed on what to write. But he has never seen the need to press the IBC to open its servers as had been decreed by the courts. Who wants the ballot boxes, not the servers, opened because the, the ballot boxes guarantee a confirmation of his fraudulent win. The boxes guarantee his fraudulent win because they are stuffed with the two million hectare ballot papers that were printed by Al Gurai and whose whereabouts have never been explained. Talking of the ruling by the so called dissenting judges, we challenge Uhuru Kenyatta to deny that one of the dissenting judges spent, spent all Saturday at State House at his invitation in a celebration of the descending ruling ahead of its delivery. Na mtazamaji hapo kidogo kiongozi wa NASA Manasa ambaye alikuwa akizungumza kupitia kwenye taarifa ambayo ilianza kutoa hapo awali kwa njia moja kwa moja kauli aliyotoa kiongozi wa NASA Raila Odinga alikuwa kwa inaendana na kauli iliyotolewa hapo jana na rais Uhuru Kinyata akiwa katika ikulu ya Nairobi kuhusiana na ule uamuzi wa kina ambao uliweza kutolewa na mahakama ya juu hapo juzi. Tukiendelea na taarifa zaidi mtazamaji ni kwamba familia ya aliyekuwa mbunge wa Bomashoge Burabu Joel Onyancha inaendelea kuomboleza kifo chake huku babake Onyancha akisema kuwa amebakia na upweke kwani marehemu mwanae alikuwa anawapa mkate wao wa kila siku mayatima wengi katika eneo bunge la Bomashoge Burabu. Akizungumza nyumbani kwake babake marehemu mzee Nemuel Onyancha alisema kuwa miongoni mwa mayatima hao ni watoto watano ambao walikuwa wanawe dada na ndugu ya marehemu Onyancha ambao waliofariki. <tos> Na mtazamaji mwenda zake Joel Onyancha ambaye alikuwa ni mbunge wa sehemu hiyo alifariki hapo jana jioni akiwa anaendelea kupokea matibabu katika hospitali ya Aga Khan hapa jijini Nairobi. Tukiendelea na taarifa zaidi zaidi ya wakazi elfu moja kutoka kijiji cha Gede eneo bunge la Ganze kaunti ya Kilifi wameapa kuzuia azimio la ardhi yao kunyakuliwa na wawekezaji kutoka kaunti ya Mombasa. Kulingana na wenyeji hao wanasiasa wanataka kupigwa mnada kwa ardhi ambayo iliyokuwa ya kufuga mifugo ili wajinufaishe wao wenyewe Francis Mtalaki na maelezo zaidi Kwa kupatizama ni kama kichaka lakini hapa ndipo wakazi wa Gede huchunga mifugo wao ambapo sasa pameugeukia na kuwa almasi ya wawekezaji wanaotaka kuwa hada wa kazi baada ya ripoti za wanasiasa kuhusu njama ya kuuza kipande hicho cha ardhi Waliunda hayo mashamba kwa njia ya ukora kwa sababu wenyeji hawakuhamasishwa vile ilivyokuwa inahitajika walibadilisha majina wakasema kuna Cliff Ranch na Grama Ranch na sehemu hii 
ilibidi watafute magunyenye wale watu wachache ili kwamba waweze kujinufaisha hao wenyewe jambo ambalo limeweka watu uchungu wenyeji wameapa kufanya kila uwezalo iwapo serikali haitaingilia kati na kuona kwamba ekari hizo la kimoja hazijanyakuliwa kwani hata mababu wamekuwa kiendeleza ufugaji katika eneo hili serikali ilidinisha samani kwamba hizo group ranges ine ziweze ipatiwe uh, mamlaka ya mashamba ya pande kwa hivyo jambo ambalo tunawaomba ni nyinyi wenyewe mpitishe <laughs> kama bado mnataka hizo mashamba ipaki kwa group ranch ama iende mikononi ya wananchi miaka hiyo tulioishi hapa ile manufaa hatukuona na tulipogeuza katiba yetu ya Kenya tulianza kuisoma tukijua ardhi itarudi kwetu na tukaipigia kura na ikapita si hapo nikujua kwamba sisi tumepata chetu tunarudi hapa wanasiasa hapa mtu asimamie kitu ugombe kitu fulani waanguke umekopa pesa unarudi ardhi ya babu na ndio ya baba na ndio yangu mimi saa hii unataka kuitafutia tajiri uuze Wanasiasa wanaodaiwa kuendeleza njema hiyo fiche ni kutoka kaunti jirani ya Mombasa na waliopoteza nyadhifa zao wakishirikiana na wengine kutoka Kilifi. Swala la ardhi Kilifi ni tata hata baada ya tume ya ardhi kuonekana kutaka kutatua migongano kama hii. Francis Mtalaki, KT News, Kilifi.